to Film in Minnesota. I'm your host, Alan Tracy. And I'm Rahana Power. And today we have Krista Rose with us. Hello, Krista. Hi, thanks for having me, guys. So, thanks for being on. Yeah. Um, Krista, we worked together briefly on a small, well, test project, if you will. Um, yeah. Got some really cool shots and stills out of it. Um, but tell people, what, what is it that you do? Um, well, I am a model and actress here in the Twin Cities. So um, you might have seen me in some Target ads, some La Marca ads, done all kinds of things. Um, I mostly do uh, social media commercials right now, but hoping to get into some bigger stuff later. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do. Cool. That's awesome. Um, Krista, we have a lot of questions that we want to ask you today, but before we jump into all of that, um, we've got our standard, uh, curious opener that I have to have to ask first, what is a fun, interesting, special talent or skill, or just something about you, um, that others may or may not be aware of? Um, <laughs> something that people may not be aware of, although I, I do post about it is, um, I actually have my own squirrel appreciation Instagram account. <laughs> what? Um, so it's not a talent, but it's something really interesting about me. I love squirrels. Yeah. I just think they're the cutest things in the world. I don't know why. Um, and my husband and I, we have our own little town home and there's a little deck and these little creatures like about four years ago just started coming up and just asking, begging for food. And so um, you know, through a series of events, someone gave me a squirrel picnic table. And Aww. so it's the cutest thing. They sit on it and they'll eat the nuts that we set out for them. Um, I don't hand feed them or anything. <laughs> Gotta stay safe. But yeah. <laughs> um, I think I have more followers on that account than I do on my own Instagram account. So <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of a unique, fun thing, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. They are pretty adorable. Do you get any like... Like, I mean, a, a squirrel can be a squirrel can be a squirrel, but do you get like albino squirrels or black squirrels or like big, I feel like around here, at least like I live over in St. Paul, we've got some really large, hefty squirrels, but they've got like the cutest <laughs> puffy tails. Like, do you get any like really fun ones? You know, we've had, we've had one red squirrel and gosh, it was, that was a ruckus. Um, it lives in our neighborhood somewhere. I, and it just, every now and then we'll see it, um, they're, they're pretty cute. I haven't seen any black squirrels though, or, or albino squirrels either. I, I was kind of hoping to and be a great appearance on, on the account, but mm -hmm. no, just, just plain old gray squirrels. And, you know, they all have different looks and everything, but they're just plain old gray. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I, I remember when you started <laughs> that account, I think, because it oh, was, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it was around the time we started connecting, and then, yeah. <laughs> Ellen's an yeah, original it's... follower. Yes, yes. <laughs> an, an OG fan. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I don't. It's randomly. I started out with nothing, and it randomly got up to five hundred thirty followers now, and I'm just like, oh who wow, is following this page. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, what is the Instagram account tag like? How can we find this? <laughs> yeah, you can find it. So it's at squirrel friends. So it's, um, but friends is spelled F R E N Z. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm going for it right now. I, I don't know what everybody else <laughs> listening is doing, but <laughs> might, gotta, might, might need to check it out. I, I'm getting into videos more now and people seem to like that. So Aww. liked followed. <laughs> right there. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so our questions <laughs> for today, uh, starting with like uh, w within your acting, um, what what got you started in acting? Really, like where did it start? Yeah, um, you know, I'd say it started. Well, I do I do need a little bit of a backstory here. So I um, I went to Northwestern, got my BS in communication. Um, got married and about six months to a year into marriage, um, my appendix burst and I had to go in for emergency surgery, all this stuff. I was laid up for like six weeks, you know, to recover during that time. I was binge watching, um, the show, you guys might know it CW, the arrow with Stephen Amell. 
Yeah, um, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was really big, you know, in its day and everything. So I was literally binge watching. I had nothing else to do during that time. And I'd never been to watch shows, but here I am. <laughs> and okay. I love the show. Just disclaimer. I love the show. Still my favorite show. Love all the actors. But I had this epiphany while I was binge watching it. And I was like, wow, if, if these guys can act and get paid and this show is this big, <laughs> I can definitely act and get paid, um, you know, and make it a career. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at that point in my life, I, I never even thought that acting or anything artistic could be an actual career. I never came from an acting or artistic background. My husband didn't really. Um, and so it was, it was really interesting to actually have that epiphany. But that was just funny because it, it came from that show um, that I was like, this actually, this actually is possible for me. Um, so, and then... I guess from there, what I started doing is I had no connections in Minneapolis here. I just started applying for everything that I could find online that looked legit. And I started being an extra for any and every project and um, just built connections from there. So that's the way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, what a fun way to like realize like an interest or something that you want to pursue. Yeah. <laughs> kind of it was fun. so random <laughs> yeah <laughs> and there's That's... honestly no hate <laughs> there's no hate toward them <laughs> right. like I I love that it still is my favorite show yeah. but I just I could not get over that it's like man if these guys can do this <laughs> mm -hmm. so it took a burst appendix <laughs> <to> exactly <laughs> catalyst you into acting that's interesting yeah. <laughs> you know honestly I think I needed that though because you know in life it's so easy just to get caught up in what we're doing and not actually and even just our own limitations, you know, if you live day to day within those, and you don't understand that they even are limiting, it takes an event like that to kind of shake you awake and to realize, am I actually living what I what I want to be doing? And what is it that I actually want to be doing? You know, and I think it's just really important that, you know, I since then, I mean, I always evaluate, like, am I still happy in what I'm doing? Am I still happy acting and modeling? Mm -hmm. And the answer is always yes. But I think it's just that shook me awake to be like, no, I don't want to live my life um, not knowing what my purpose is and not knowing what my passion is. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So after, after you had this realization and you started, uh, you know, submitting yourself for everything and anything, um, trying to gain these connections, what was your fill your ugh, words? This is a podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so good at this. What was your first film role and when did that happen? Um, I think that happened like that fall, I want to say. So like a few, three months afterward, um, nice. it was, uh, I'm trying to remember. I was an extra. This was so long ago. I think it was end of 2019 um, or yeah, maybe before then. And I applied to be an extra for this uh, project. Some people from New York city flew in and it was their senior project their senior film that they were creating it was really legit I mean it was it was awesome it was in this small uh this small cafe and I had to go around and it was my first time being an extra and I, I didn't know anything I mean I was just green you know and mm -hmm. I walk on set and they're like okay we want you to sit down and pretend like you're talking to this person and so um I meet this stranger and we're just we're just whispering to each other and they stop and they're like you, you actually can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was like, right. I knew that. I knew that. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> this is not. And, you know, especially as my first time, I was like, this is so mm -hmm. awkward. I mean, I was just mouthing to this person, trying to ask questions, trying not to talk over each other. And, yep. <laughs> and I just look back at that and I just, I, I still treasure that memory because I was just in awe and the magic of being on a movie set just, just, it was so bewitching and it just captured my heart so much, even though I was an extra, just <laughs> feeling like yep. a little out of place, <laughs> but, um, I actually met some great connections on that set. So I'm really glad, you know, I, I did that. I reconnected with some people in high school who were doing incredible film work today. Oh, wow. Um, oh. yeah, it was really, it was really cool. It was really like awesome for my first, my first thing, but yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it was really fun. Love so it. like what roles have you noticed like from that and other experiences that intrigue you the most when it comes to filmmaking? Um, 
when it comes to filmmaking, gosh, I'd say probably direct, like in the role of everyone performing that like the director, cinematographer, like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, gosh, I would have to say director and probably cinematography. And the reason those really intrigue me is they have such, such an important job because they're communicating the story and they have to communicate like what it actually meant, but they actually have to work together in a way that's just so unique. I mean, how does, I still am in awe of how directors communicate to cinematographers, like how they, how they can tell the story together, but still separate and in completely different ways. And I just, I, I, you know, people have asked me before, like, Oh, do you want to ever direct? And I'm just like, I have no idea. I mean, there's so much that goes into it, Mm -hmm. you know, and, Mm -hmm. and telling a story, you can have three different directors tell the same story, three different, completely different ways. And a lot of it depends on, you know, talent and their interpretation and how they diversify like their effort like I just again it just I'm in awe of those two roles those those do intrigue me <laughs> yeah, yeah there, like... there's so much perspective there that it's mm-hmm. like are, yeah definitely being on the same page but then you know it's it's different too like a cinematographer and a director will see things differently so yeah what were you gonna say Rahana I was gonna say yeah I feel like like those those two roles can definitely be some of the most intriguing but also some of the most intimidating because you are taking on yeah. so much and it's like that's really your baby then <laughs> so yeah that's I totally hear what you're saying yeah. um yeah. so going back to like acting specifically for you who who's your favorite actor or actors that you know you either like to maybe watch or or you have um, maybe you get the most out of their performances that helps you with what you do. That's a great question. Um, I'd say one of my favorite actors is Robert Downey Jr. And the reason is, is because I, when I first saw his film, Sherlock Holmes, a game of shadows. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, I just, I loved, I read all of Sherlock Holmes. Like I I read all of those when I was a teenager. And so seeing the movie and seeing how he brought it to life um, in a way that I never imagined Sherlock to be, Mm -hmm. first of all, like I was just shook after watching it. But secondly, (laughs) I was like, wow, even though Sherlock is so much of, you know, someone that can't relate to the normal person, he made him relatable to people and to the audience. And you really were able to connect with that human side of him that I'm not quite sure, like a lot of people have portrayed in, in the character Sherlock before. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, he also did that in Iron Man too. You know, he, he barely had to say anything or do anything for you to know who he was, who that character was. And it was in the little ticks. It was in those little things that he portrayed. Um, And I just, to get lost in a film and to not even think about the acting, to not even think about the story, but just to get lost in it. I think he really is able to do that with the characters that he portrays. Mm-hmm. So. Right. You love him. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> that's a good choice. <laughs> <He's so> good. <laughs> yeah. Cause I remember, I think with Robert Downey Jr. I remember like the first film that really stood out to me was Gothica um Mm -hmm. and his kind of comeback so to speak you know um so it's yeah (laughs) old Robert Downey we know his past but you know it's like he came back from that that's that's the best part about that 100 percent and yep I just remember his performance in that with I think uh Halle Berry right Mm -hmm. also so yeah um in that film I I noticed like he really stood out in his performances there. I mean, I know mm-hmm. he's, he did other films before that, but um, just the first time seeing it in a the theater, like, you know, mm-hmm. I thought that was good. So what, what do you like about the acting process or what, um, what's your favorite thing about it? I suppose that gets you going, that motivates you as an actor. Oof, that's a good question. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many things that I like about it. I, 
I'll, okay, I'll narrow it down to two things. <laughs> I could literally list like 20 things. Yeah, go um, for it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just narrow top, it down yeah. for the sake of everyone. <laughs> uh, a few, top few things, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd say character creation and the delivery of that performance. Um, the, the delivery of the performance, I'll talk about that first. To, ever since I started acting, ever since I started you know, cause I, I did do um, some theater in high school as well, but um, you know, ever since I really understood like the background of acting kind of character creation, all of those little pieces, how they work together, delivering that character, there's nothing thrilling to me because you're, you're literally, you're, you're bringing to life like black text on a page. You're bringing to life this character that someone just could have read in a story. And um, I don't know, it's just, there's something just so magical about that. And there's something so magical just about becoming that. And in the performance, you're not really thinking about yourself. You're thinking about what that character is thinking. And I just, I, I just, the only thing I can call it is magical because there's no other feeling to describe it as. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that part is probably just, just my absolute favorite. But another part I really like is the character creation part. And the reason is, is because it's very scientific and it's also very mystery oriented. You know, you have to solve a mystery in order to create a character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought I knew what character creation was um, before I really started studying it and getting into it more. Um, I read a book by Larry Moss called The Intent to Live. And um, in that book, he talks about all the little intricate details that go into character creation, such as um, the given circumstances, you know, what you already know about the character, what's in the script, what the director has told you. And then you have to piece all the puzzle pieces together from there. So it's not quite, you know, you get some clues, you get the bare bones, but from there, you actually are the one that's putting those pieces together and creating a story out of that person's life. Mm -hmm. You know, as humans, we're so intricate, like we're so incredibly intricate. I'm always fascinated um, by meeting new people and seeing what they're like and seeing who they are and why they like certain things. You know, um, <laughs> I just, it, it fascinates me. And because of the fact that it's almost never ending, you know, and to me, like putting those pieces together and making that, um, that character based off of the idea that their intricacies are never ending that, you know, the reason that they, you know, kind of sit a certain way or they raise a quarter inch of their eyebrow or maybe the way that they um, smoke mm -hmm. and how they feel about how they smoke and how they feel about what others think about how they smoke and what it does for them. I mean, all of that is going through that character's mind and should be going through that actor's mind. Um, when they're delivering that performance and, and that part of it to me just makes it so complex, but so beautiful because it's not just, here's a formula that you can apply to everything. It's no, you actually have to really be creative with it. Um, and it's just something that I will never get bored of, you know, and I think it's hard to find those things in your life where, you know, I, I've worked a corporate job for three years and, you know, I did it at the beginning of it. I did it knowing that I wanted to do uh, modeling and acting mm -hmm. and I did it for three years. And at the end of it, which was actually uh, pretty recently, um, I, I realized like there are so many things that people are wired for and, you know, yes, people are wired for corporate. Yes. People are wired for art, for being an artist. But I think a lot of what actors are wired for is that character creation process. And that's a lot of where um, their talent can kind of be fostered and released. Mm -hmm. um, I never considered myself an artistic person until I started acting. And then it just mm -hmm. came alive and it came through and um, it took a lot of time and work. But, um, but, it, but it was founded through that character creation process. So I, that's, that's probably my favorite. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right yeah cool i think that that's totally understandable um i mean it's just like you mentioned getting to know someone but at the same time it's it's so deeply um versus i mean i know alan but 
I don't know if I know you that well. <laughs> um, whereas, you know, when you're playing someone, you have to you have to be the one person who who knows them better than anyone. Um, mm-hmm. And learning every tiny intricate thing, um, absolutely. And then, each, like you mentioned, each person, each character is completely different. So yeah. you it's you can never get bored. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, so. You've been doing this for a few years now. We had a pandemic. We're still in a pandemic. Um, Have you been able to progress in your career as you've maybe expected to when you first started? Um, I'd I'd say I definitely have. Again, I had a lot of mindsets I had to break about, you know, stepping into this. I'm still pretty new at it, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Consider all things considered, I actually am pretty still new at it. Um, You know, I had... I actually would say it has progressed how I wanted it to. I've been in quite a few. Um, I have some agencies here in Minneapolis now. And um, between those and between all my local connections for um, indie films and stuff like that, I've I've been really happy with how far I've gotten so far, you know, and I, I'm so grateful just for all the opportunities, even throughout the pandemic that I had. Um, I set this crazy goal for myself in 2020 to have to be cast in at least one feature film. And that year I was so blessed with being cast in two feature films um, during 2020, which was like, (laughs) I don't even know. I don't know how (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm still looking back and kind of scratching my head. Like how did uh, anyways, yeah. (laughs) um, one of them ended up, I, we got one scene in and then it ended up uh, shutting down the second one though, that one went through and we did an entire feature um, film last, last or in 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, and that one's still in post right now, but I just, I look back and I'm like, that, that was mind stretching for me. That broke so many of my own barriers in my mind about how far I could go Mm -hmm. that I I'm just so grateful. And, you know, of course I'm looking forward to some great opportunities this next year. Um, but, uh, and I do hope to pursue more, uh, commercial work this year as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty content with how it's gone so far. Absolutely. Yeah. You sound like you've been very successful so far. So congrats. Thank you. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose like of the roles you've played in the past, um, what are some of your favorites when we talk about process and like maybe these feature roles, I don't know. Do do you get more time with those roles maybe? So yeah. What, what roles kind of stand out to you? Yeah. Um, well, speaking of that feature film I was in last year, that was one of my favorite roles ever. Um, I think a lot of it could have been contributed to the fact that it was, I did spend so much time on it mm-hmm. and I did have enough time to create that role. Um, but it was, uh, so the role is, her name is Princess Katrina um, and she is a princess assassin. And <laughs> the film is actually set, <laughs> I'll explain. Um, the film is actually set in a fantasy world. So think like D and D style. Mm-hmm. And um, it was shot last year by three headed monster media. I don't know if you guys know them at all. Um, it has um, the three directors are Taz Wolf, Brian Steenerson and John Heller. And these guys are incredible. They are creative geniuses. And I learned so, so much from them. That's another reason this is my favorite role. Um, but yeah, so this princess assassin, she is just trying to get her kingdom back and she trains with these, um, assassin nuns for a while. And, um, you know, she needs to defeat the evil witch Mythian and claim her kingdom back. And the the coolest part about this was there was so much sword combat and fight combat and choreography in there. That was on my like wish list. That wasn't even a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And I was like, I was just beside myself. Like every time I'd come home on set, I'd be like just glowing, telling my husband husband about like what I did that day. And he's a business guy, so he's just like, okay, like what? <laughs> <laughs> you you guys are sword fighting on the screen, okay? Like, um, but we that's actually where I met. Um, that's actually where I met my uh, current martial arts instructor, Lee Fillingsmith. And yeah. um, you guys, I think you know him. Oh yeah, um, we lovely. <laughs> we is, I just, 
I am so grateful that I met Lee because, um, you know, we were on set and I think for one or two scenes, we didn't have a fight coordinator and, um, we really needed one. <laughs> we needed yeah. not just one. We needed Lee. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's just incredible. If you've ever worked with him on set before, I mean, I, everyone felt so, so informed, so safe. Mm-hmm. And the stuff that he was able to get us to do at like people that had never done any type of fight coordination or even held a sword before the stuff he was able to get us to pull off was, was awesome. I mean, it was just insane. And, um, and I've actually been uh, training with him weekly ever since, um, working oh, wow. on my black belt right now. Yeah. It's so oh. much fun. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so much fun. But, um, but yeah, it, you know, he, he made it like, he actually was the one to kind of intrigue me to be like, maybe I actually want to pursue this more. So the next mm-hmm. film that we do in this trilogy, I'll actually look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I've been, you know, training with him for film ever since then. And, um, and yeah, but overall, I mean, creating princess Katrina, she, you know, uh, gosh, I could talk all day about princess Katrina. She has, she's, she has all these like hidden insecurities, but she's mm-hmm. hardened on the outside because she has to be tough for her kingdom. And mm-hmm. she also has to be tough because the world is in that, you know, movie. A lot of it is male dominant and male driven. And so, you know, she really has to be just cut and dry and, you know, really blunt with people and, um, and still stand up for herself and her kingdom and make those right choices because, you know, she has a weighty thing on her shoulders. So, mm-hmm. um, so overall, it was it was a fun role for many reasons, but um, but yeah, that's that's probably my favorite by far. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, it when I'm I'm re- really intrigued by this this film. Um, do you know like when it comes out? When it's available? How it'll be available? Is none of that information available yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually going to probably be out this winter. Um, we had some editors that were working on it and just mm-hmm. there was some complications with it. Um, but it should be out this winter is what we're, what we're thinking. Um, there will be a premiere for it at a theater somewhere locally here. Nice. Um, I think that information will all be put together and marketed closer to. Um, right. So that's all I know for now, but I just hope, that's I just awesome. can't wait to see it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No kidding. That'll be so exciting. I know. <laughs> um, so what um if that's your favorite like film or role that you've had um thinking like taking a step back a little bit what films overall that you've watched um like Sherlock Holmes you mentioned earlier have maybe been the most inspiring to you or the most influential to you and your acting um up to this point um yeah. Sherlock Holmes would definitely have to be in there um because that was one of the first films that I, I watched growing up where I was like, just overtaken with, I don't know, just the whole story mm-hmm. and how he portrayed him. Um, yeah. So that's definitely one that it really inspired me. I'd say um, it keeps coming to my mind, but singing in the rain, I just, it, it's a classic, yeah. but like what they were able to do um, just, just the, the sheer talent that they had on that movie. I just can't get over it. Like, I still look back at that and I'm like, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. How were they so good (laughs) Yeah, Um, with no special effects or anything? And I just, I'm still in awe about that. And I, I, it actually inspires me, you know, to, to be better at what I'm doing, to be better at the things that, you know, the talents that I offer as an actor, you know, what, what type of stunts can I be doing on my own? What kind of swordsmanship can I be practicing for the next film? Um, that's going to make it that, that magical, just raw talent that they had in singing in the rain. So I think that was one of the biggest films that, um, inspired that. Yeah. That inspired that in me. So. Absolutely. Uh, do you plan to do any musicals or is that just (laughs) the film that, (laughs) you know, I would love to do a musical. I, I was in musicals in high school. Um, and I, I was in chamber singers. I was in choir. I was in everything. I, I love to sing. I love, I I'm okay. I'm okay. Dancing. <laughs> Maybe I'm better now that I've done some martial arts, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm okay with dancing. We're going to, we can talk about that later, but, um, <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I would love to be in a musical. You know, I think about Les Mis, you know, and just that, I mean, that's actually another film that had a huge impact on me and actually inspired me to start writing my own stuff. Um, so something that I, you know, kind of want to do is write a musical similar to the style of Les Mis. Um, that will definitely be a feat, but, you know, that was another one that was instrumental in me thinking musicals can be modern and still genuine and um, just powerful. So. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just thinking here as you're saying all this martial arts musical and I'm just like <laughs> thinking like, <laughs> hmm. That is <laughs> like, awesome. Would, like kind of singing in the rain type of thing, but like a sweep kick or something, you know, <laughs> sweep you know? the leg. <laughs> I bet Lee would be all in on, on helping he would, Lee is actually legit incredible at ballet. If you've ever seen, like Lee is oh. just, I'm in awe of how much he knows. I He's like that. really, like he would be all over that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be yeah. perfect. We'll have to bring that up, Rohan, next time we see him here. Exactly. Um. <laughs> yeah. It like, actually looks crazy. Idea. <laughs> well, no, it, it it is crazy though. Like ballet actually does make you better at martial arts. It's, I mean, and so many other things too. But mm-hmm. right, anyways, light on your feet. Yeah. Little tidbit there. So precise. Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. So musicals, you'd be up for that. Is there another genre where you're like, I'm just dying to? I would love to. I mean, you've already gotten to do. You said like the dream of you know, sword play and and sort like fighting and combat and all that so like what's what's the next dream genre um oh gosh I'd I'd have to say action films you know I I, or a martial arts film or Star Wars you know just I'll just throw that (laughs) one out there yes (laughs) put it out there um (laughs) or series (laughs) yeah 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 you know I Honestly, anything that I can apply, what I've been learning in the gym with Lee, whatever I can apply to a film, I would love. And I'd love to try and perform some of my own stunts. Um, just with the stuff that I've learned, I feel like I, I could attempt <laughs> mm-hmm. um, to do that. Um, but yeah, I'd say, you know, anything action oriented. For a while, I, I wanted to do um, like a Hallmark. I wanted to be in like a Hallmark film. Uh, and yeah. you know so I don't know that's that's that might be somewhere in my future just as like a bucket list item more yeah. than anything because mm-hmm. you know we grew up watching them and yep. um but yeah action and adventure that's that's definitely where my next big goal is I don't know about for this year I like but it. <laughs> right <laughs> I like it I like Soon. it yeah <laughs> so what's next for you um, well, actually, I um, I just signed with another agency a few weeks ago, so I'm really excited about that here in Minneapolis. So, and I'm expecting a lot more work in 2022. Mm-hmm. So, what's next for me is I've actually focused a lot of my attention to modeling and uh, commercial commercial modeling. And um, so, I think, and I just started modeling seriously this past year. And I just found out how much I actually really like it. It also has those science uh, pieces in there, you know, the science of posing and been learning a lot about that. What makes a good pose? How do you actually sell a product and not just you? Mm -hmm. Um, All of there's just, there's a lot to get into with that, but I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that I'm focusing on right now um, to get a kind of a foundation here in the cities. And then from there, I'm actually planning on applying nationwide to agencies as well, um, for film and for modeling, you know, I, I'd love to travel for work. So, and, um, and yeah, so that's my big, that, those are my big goals for 2022, just, you know, continue to make this even more of a full-time thing for me and, um, you know, just keep pushing forward. So great. That's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Where can people find your work and contact you, Krista? Yeah, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Krista Rose Media, and that's C H R I S T A, and then Rose Media. And on TikTok, it's Krista Rose underscore Media. Not quite sure why that's the case. That is the case. <laughs> it happens. Some someone yes. takes your name or some. I don't know. It's, you know. <laughs> There was a lot of that involved this past year. (laughs) (laughs) So Krista, 
final question. It's the big one. Um, what do you want people to remember most about you? Whether it's mm -hmm. after watching your performances or maybe after working with you across the board. Mm, that's really good. Um, you know, I, what I really hope that people remember is that like, it really doesn't matter what kind of background you came from. Like there is never a lack of opportunity. Like you can always choose to pursue your dreams and you have the ability to just, I think so many people forget how to dream. And I, that's a huge passion of mine, especially since I had my kind of like aha moment uh, with my own career. And I just hope that people realize like, um, you know, after working with me that there is so much hope and that you can pursue your dream, even if it is part-time at first, which it probably will be, <laughs> especially if it's artistic. Um, and that, you know, if you keep working at it and if you keep going for it, like you just need to give it some time and things will start to, to come and they'll start to bloom for you. So, um, yeah, just that there's, there's always hope. I love that. Great. Yeah. I like that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, Krista, thank you so much for taking the time and hanging out with us tonight, um, answering yeah. all of our questions. It was really great getting to know you. Um, and until next time, thanks for joining us here in Dillman, Minnesota. Mm -hmm.